If we're talking about the solar industry as a whole, Global Solar creates a CIGS thin film solar cell on a flexible substrate, whereas that's different entirely from the silicon industry which cuts cells out of ingots. Yeah, the business model right now is based on a, a scaling of a of a efficient solar cell reel to reel, a whole entire different production process, which will drive the cost down to a level that will go through the floor of the silicon pricing in the foreseeable future. And now I'm going to close in on the thin film industry because the, uh, the whole market is a little bit broad. We produce CIGS thin film on a flexible foil. Most companies produce thin film on glass. What's the benefit of that? It's portable. You can pick it up and move it. You can create different configurations and you can put it into different products. Well, I think in the CIGS world of depositing CIGS on a flexible foil, Global Solar is clearly in the lead. There are no other people who are in production at an average a rate of efficiency of 10%. In fact, I'm not aware on a flexible substrate anybody really in production except Global Solar right now. The thing that's neat about the flexible solar cell and the solar cell that we create is that it can be configured across the entire solar spectrum. You can create small portable products, you can actually laminate the material into glass modules, and you can also create a paradigm shift for the building industry where you now begin to put solar energy inside of actual building products that when the building's built, we don't put solar panels on top because it's already got it inside. I think in the building integrated world, it's a very young market right now, and it's going to spend a couple of years trying to find itself. There's a lot of chatter about it out there, but there's no real definition. And I'm, I'm perceiving that it may end up country by country because when you're talking about architecture, you're talking about a lot of differences between different nations. So it's going to require that product designers and module designers become OEM product designers. And that's, a, that's a quite a shift from the standard module industry. Right now, we, at the end of 2007, we were consistently producing roll-to-roll -roll manufacturing at 10% efficiency across the entire web. Our roadmap indicates that we should be able to achieve 1% per year increase in efficiency for the foreseeable next three years. Right now we are currently going from 4 megawatts to 40 megawatts in Tucson, Arizona, so a 10 times increase in capacity. We've got the tools in place, the buildings in place. We've also, after this, right after this, we're putting 35 megawatts in Berlin, Germany. Right after that, there will be another 100 megawatts go into Tucson for a total capacity at the end of 2010 of 170 megawatts. Oh yes it does, certainly does. We're all just running around crazy because when you're resurrecting two plants simultaneously and taking down another, you can't imagine the number of things that come up. This was an evolutionary process. We took what we knew very well and we transposed it into higher scale equipment. So, so we didn't do anything to ruin the business model technically and that was very important because when you turn on a new plant you are at zero efficiency. And that happened only three months ago. We're already up at our targets for this time, uh, getting very close to our 10% goal already. I think the main challenge is to make sure that we meet all of the roadmaps in production and that we actually stay within the time frame that we selected. One of the things that we've seen in the thin film industry is there's been a lot of things cast out there of plans to do, but we're actually achieving it. We're actually producing high volume SIGs, not a, a pretty complex recipe to put down on a flexible substrate consistently roll after roll and product after product.